Okay, so now we're going to do a question involving columns of air, the flute. So what we've got is a flute here, which is an open tube. And if our flute has a length of 23.8 centimeters from the closed end to the first open hole, the question, quite simply, is what will the frequency be? What will the fundamental frequency for this particular setting of the flute be? We'll need one other piece of information, and that is the temperature. Let's say it is 21 degrees Celsius in here. What do we have to do? Well, first of all, we need to, of course, figure out the velocity, the speed of sound. So, Vs is 331 plus 0.59 T. No problem. That's, of course, assuming standard temperature and pressure and all those things. We dump in the numbers, we get 343.39 meters per second, which is, of course, more sig figs than we actually have, but that's fine. I'll just keep it as that to get as close to answer as possible, and then we will we'll round it later on. No big deal. So, what, of course, we need to understand is that when we blow across the flute, we set up the first harmonic, and in a closed tube at one end and open at the other, we know that there has to be a node here at the closed end. Just like with a string, when it's attached somewhere, it has to be a node, it can't wave. Sound waves are, of course, longitudinal, they don't look like this, but it's much easier to draw and to imagine this than longitudinal waves. So I'm going to draw it as low as a longitudinal wave, but of course it's not actually. But still, the open end can't have a node because it's free to sort of wave, right? although it's compressing, compressing and rarefying. Which means that we're going to get an anti-node here. For the first harmonic, we need to have as few wavelengths as possible, right? As, as, as little waving as possible. So we have to go from a node to an anti-node. It's going to look like that. Of course, if I carry this on, Eventually, we get another node. And if I carried it on, we'd get another maximum. And if I carried it on, we'd get another node. So you can see that a whole wavelength would be much, much bigger than the length of the flute. And you can see, for part A, when we're trying to find the fundamental frequency, you can see that in this case, the length is equal to only one quarter of a wavelength lambda, which means that lambda is 4 times L. So that's okay. We go to our universal wave equation. V equals lambda F to find that. F equals V over lambda. We've already worked out V. We now know lambda, so 343.39 divided by 4 times 23.8, but of course that's centimeters, I've got to make it 0 0.238 meters, meters per second. And when I grab my calculator, I get 359 point whatever, 360 hertz. This is what I'm going to get. So no problem. That's part A. It's pretty straightforward. You have to, of course, understand the nature of standing waves. And books will give you a formula to figure out this relationship, or this relationship, for open tubes, one open, one closed, both ends closed, for the different harmonics where n is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But I really think it's easier just to, just to understand it. If we want a second harmonic, if we want our first harmonic, rather, our second frequency, our first overtone, well, then I'll draw the tube just like before, at the same length. I still have to have a node here, and I still have to have an anti-node here. So, I'm literally going to pretend that I crush this wavelength into it. I can't put a half a wavelength in there because I would have to have a node at each end. So I'm going to keep on crushing it, not just a quarter wavelength, but another quarter wavelength, so that my wave, if I can draw it, will end up looking like this, with an anti-node there and an anti-node there. 
carrying this on in the same manner as before, I can see that it would come together here again. So now I can see that the tube of the flute is still less than a full wavelength, but it's more than a half. It's, of course, three quarters. Obviously, my drawing's not quite perfect. So, what is the frequency of the first harmonic? Well, it's still going to be V over lambda. But this time, the length of the tube is 3 quarters times lambda, which means that lambda is 4 thirds L. So, dumping that in, I get 343.39 divided by 4 L. Thirds on the bottom, it flips around at the top. That L, though, is 0.239 meters still. Of course, the flute hasn't changed length. Grabbing my calculator, I dump in all my numbers, tick, 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 and I get about 1080 hertz. And the question I ask myself is, does that make sense? Because I like to make sure I haven't made any silly mistakes, just like we did hopefully with the last problem. If the wavelength goes from 4L down to 4 thirds L, the wavelength is decreasing. It's getting smaller by a third. It's decreasing by a factor of three. And if we look at the universal wave equation, lambda is on the bottom. If it gets smaller by three, then frequency should get bigger by three. So we would expect F1, in this case, to be three times F0, the fundamental frequency, which it sure is. 360 times three will give us 180. But that doesn't mean that the first fundamental frequency is always three times, the first harmonic is always three times the first fundamental. It depends on the geometry of the situation. That's why I don't bother memorizing all those different formulas when it only takes a second to figure out what lambda is compared to L. The other thing you'll notice is that the wavelength has uh, the number of wavelengths in the tube has increased by a half a wavelength. If I was to find the second harmonic frequency, it would go up by another half a wavelength again. I'm not going to do it, but you could try it. What would F2 be? We're going to smush another half wavelength in there and try to find the answer if you like. 